Hello friends, this is Daniel from Morales. Today we're going to do something that I think you are going to like quite a bit. We have been working with NFTs in the channel and today we want to show you how you can mint your own NFTs utilizing the tools that Morales gives you. Morales offers you a very nice integration with IPFS, which is the leading solution for decentralized storage. So you can do this in the fly with only your UI and with a little bit more than 50 lines of code. So we are going to go to here to sign up to our DAP. We are going to say that uh, this is Daniel and uh, Daniel at uh, Daniel that me that's our user. This is our integration with MetaMask. Now Morales and MetaMask are working their magic and here we are. Now that we are signed into our DAP, we are able to interact with it. These actions were deactivated when we were not logged in and this is because minting is a transaction and we need to have an ethereum address that is active to send transactions to the blockchain now we want to choose an nft name but we're going to choose that after we choose the file because this is going to be something interesting this is the one that we're going to mint is the powerful ivan awesome is hilarious a uh, shout out to acid badger i think was his name the person that created this one so we're going to mint this one as an nft so we're going to choose it we are going to choose the name we're going to call it powerful ivan fingers great stamina likes web3 hits the gym and likes to hike, drinks too much coffee. This is the description and the name of our NFT. Now let's go to mint it. So let's do it right now. We're going to upload a mint. This might take a while because there's a bunch of things behind the scenes. And this is one of them. We need to sign up the transaction. We are going to be interacting with a contract right now. So we need to send a transaction to the contract and we have the transaction through which we minted the NFT. It might take a while for us to be able to see it in our OpenSea. And the transaction was confirmed in my OpenSea collection. We have powerful Ivan fingers. We have all the descripting data about it. So obviously we have the image and we have a great stamina, likes web tree, hits the gym and likes to hike, drinks too much coffee. The details is the 10 NFT that was mint in this contract and it was done through the Rinkeby blockchain. So we are in the testnet right now. And uh, this is it guys, it's a very cool app and you can mint your own NFTs with it. But how does this app work? Let's get to see it. What we have here is a very simple Flask app. What we do in a Flask app is usually we have a run.py that runs our app and then that will trigger everything that we have under this app directory over here. We have our index.html with all the elements that we need for the app. In this case, these are our interaction buttons to interact with our login with MetaMask. For the NFT minter, we need to have the name of the NFT, the description, and the most important field of all, which is our file element. When we upload this file element, we are going to be able to upload it and mint it with this button that will trigger our logic. Once our logic runs, we display the result of the transaction that trigger our NFT minting in our result space. Let's go to the logic to check what the logic of this is about. For analyzing the logic, I want you to remember that an NFT is like a deed of property. If you go in your city, 
to the property registry, you will find there that they have electronic records. And those electronic records contain metadata about the property. The deed says who is the owner, but the description and everything that pertains to identifying that property is metadata. What is the address of the house? What is the cadastral information about the house? Meaning what is the assess value for tax purposes? What are the blueprints and measurements of the property? Everything will be there as metadata. Um, for NFTs, it's the same. When you mint an NFT, the main thing that you deal with is linking the token with the metadata. The token says who is the owner because it has the information about that in the blockchain, but the metadata identifies the object. There are two ways of dealing with it. You either can deal with that in a centralized fashion, which is pretty okay, but then you will have a single point of failure, or you can do it more in line with what the blockchain industry is all about. You can do it in a decentralized fashion. And if you do it that way, you will need to have access to IPFS, which is the leading solution for having decentralized storage in the blockchain. The issue with that is that if you deal with IPFS directly, it might take a little bit of weight lifting for you to be able to have this functionality ready in your DAP. If you use Morales, on the other hand, this is going to get very easy. I will show you the example here. We have the function here that triggers when we have selected our file and we click upload. What it does is that it will collect the get element by ID of our file component that we have in our HTML. That component captures files in an array. So that's the reason we are just going to point here to the element zero because we only want the first file that is captured by that interaction. Then with this file that we are capturing from that element of our HTML, we are creating a new Morales file object. Now that we have this Morales file object, we are able to save that object in a very easy way, either to the Morales server, that will be a little bit centralized, or to IPFS, which is decentralized. And Morales supports both methods. We are going to do it here in a decentralized way. So we are going to send this command, image file, save to IPFS, and this is a Morales function that is saving this Morales object that we created here to IPFS. Here in the middle, we are just deactivating these elements of our website, so no one can click on those elements when the process has already started. When we save our image to IPFS, we will get two things from Morales. We are going to get the hash of the file in IPFS, which is the method that IPFS uses in order to identify that no single file is duplicated in their network, and the URL, which basically has to be provided by someone that has an IPFS gateway. In this case, Morales gives you both, and what we are going to get here is the URL. So this is what we are going to get from Morales here. Now that we have that image URL, then we are going to create a metadata object that contains everything that we are going to store regarding our NFT. We are getting our element by ID here, which is our uh, name for the name of our NFT. We are getting our description, which is the description of our NFT and the image which is going to be represented by the image jury that we are getting from Morales in the previous step. When we have all the metadata ready, we are just going to do the same thing that we did before. We are going to store that in IPFS, but we are going to do it storing the JSON object. So that's what we are doing here. You just have to call this scaffolding that I'm setting up here with the JSON JavaScript object that you have created here. And that will do the trick. That will uh, serialize this in order to store it in IPFS for you. And that's something that Morales is also giving you out of the box. 
Then we have that new Moralis file ready and we just save it to IPFS. We get our IPFS URL or URI and then with that we can call our min token function. That min token is done by interacting with an smart contract. And the smart contract is something that I'm giving you here. I'm including the batteries for this tutorial. You don't have to go and figure out how to create your contract for minting your NFTs in this example. I want you to focus in the interaction here. Anyway, if you're curious in the GitHub repository in the description of the video, you will have this contract based folder that contains the NFT based contract that I'm using here. This is an ERC 721 contract, which is the base for NFTs, so one of the popular bases uh, for NFTs. Now, returning to our logic, for our minting token function, what we are doing is just sending a transaction to this contract that we are describing over here, and that transaction has to contain the encoded function call. So we are getting the ABI only for the function that we are calling with the parameter and that will be encoded by this functionality that we are creating here. And then that encoded function goes to the transaction as a transaction parameter and then we just send it to the blockchain. When we get the transaction hash back, we know that the transaction is being processed so we can print to the user their transaction ID and that means that the NFT is minted. Here is the entire code for this. It's about 70 lines of code to have your own NFT mint dApp. And you see what we did, right? We connected with MetaMask, then we gave a name to our NFT. We described what were the characteristics that we wanted to describe for this NFT. Choose your file, then you mint it, and then you get this transaction. When that is done, if you go to OpenSea, here is our NFT. So guys, once again, I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Remember that all the code for this video you can find in the GitHub repository in the description. Have a good one. This is Daniel. See you in the next video.